Welcome. You're listening to The Aligned Self, conversations in creating a conscious and abundant life. This is Daniel DeNovi. I'll be your guide and host. Let's see just where we can take this. Hello, friend, and welcome back to the conversation. Today, I'm going to talk about intuition, learning to trust your intuition, and the benefits and drawbacks of intuitive guidance. There are some drawbacks, but not anything you can't live with. Now, I've been re-recording, reorganizing my course, the Intuition Course. I should find a, a different name for that. It's just too plain, I think. It doesn't capture the attention. The Intuition Course. Well, in that course, I teach people how to develop and tap into and learn to trust your intuitive guidance. But in reorganizing it, I realized that there's actually a second course inside of it. It was a little too cumbersome, and so I created a second course on developing your psychic ability. Now, there is a difference between intuitive guidance and psychic guidance, and I'll get into that in a moment. But these two courses, along with other courses and other small trainings and videos and hypnotic audios, you can find that in the Wisdom Vault, my membership program, which you can access at yesdaniel.com. But in this episode today, we're going to talk about learning to trust your intuitive guidance. What are the benefits of trusting your intuition? Can you live your entire life from intuitive guidance? Or do you need your rational mind? Well, before we get too much further, I realize some of you might just be joining me. You might not know it of my history. I started out the, the podcast, all the episodes, the first, I don't know, dozen, 13, 20 episodes, primarily dealt with intuition, developing intuitive guidance. Because I believe it's such a master skill in learning to trust and, and tap into and have that rapport, that, that give and take between your intuitive mind and your subconscious aspect. And because I feel it's so important, I've ended every episode with follow your bliss. Live your life from inner signals. Be inner directed as you engage in the epic adventure. I refer to it all the time. It's living your life from inner guidance. It will not steer you wrong. But you might be asking, who am I to be talking about intuition and psychic ability? Well, I was introduced to the etheric realm when I was eight. That's when my grandmother began reading cards. That's my mom's mom. She used a regular playing deck, and through watching her, she began teaching me how to read cards. And then, when I was 13, I began studying self-hypnosis. I began studying hypnosis in general, practicing on myself deeper and deeper states of altered consciousness. And I began building a rapport with my subconscious mind. Now, intuitive guidance is informed by the subconscious, but you can also think that the subconscious has one foot into the etheric, one foot into universal consciousness, so you're actually able to get guidance not only from your own history, your own local subconscious mind, but also tap into the universal mind. In simplest terms, intuition is rather binary in nature, meaning that it's yes or no forward or backward, turn left, turn right, stop, get out of here, avoid that person, there's potential danger here. But when I say that about the danger, I want to let you know that there's a difference between fear and intuitive guidance. Intuitive guidance is rather matter of fact. It doesn't have the emotion imbued with it. When we have a thought and it's tied with emotion, we have to be careful that we might be connected to a past experience, a past association, or we're running up against an internal fear. And it may come across as intuition. I'm telling you, if the fear is there, it's not intuition. You may have the fear show up after you get the guidance because suddenly you have to mobilize yourself. But at the animal level, you may feel fear based on your other than conscious mind perceiving different things in your environment and it's calling your attention to it and getting you ready to either mobilize yourself to run, to fight, or freeze and hold still. 
But with that said, I just realized I didn't necessarily finish my story on why I have any credibility in this. But like I said, I began delving into deeper and deeper levels of the mind. But this was a constant conundrum for me. How to trust your intuition? How to trust the unconscious? How do I know it's not just my imagination? Because a lot of times when intuitive guidance comes in, it feels like just another thought. Especially if we have an established rapport with our body, where we actually tune into the sensations that are going on. Let me say this about intuitive guidance. It's going to occur as a sensation more often than not, somewhere along the midline of the body, if you were to draw a line from your belly button up to your throat, right through the middle of your body. There's a sensation that occurs somewhere in there, in your heart space, in the pit of your stomach. And you've heard people say, I have a gut instinct about this. That's because they're tuning into that intuitive center. Speaking of gut instincts, I'm starting to get the feeling that I need to truncate, shorten my personal history. At some point, you're just going to have to take it for granted that I have the street cred to have or talk about intuitive guidance. When I was 28, I had a spiritual awakening, which blew open my empathic abilities, and I began tuning in more so to my inner guidance, really leaning on it, really relying on it. I had to learn to create a boundary for myself because I was too wide open, tapping into the thought forms, to the tapping into the, the emotional structure of another person, and frankly, it was overwhelming. I had to find out, decide to have a spiritual boundary where I ended and the other person began. And it was then that I primarily lived my life from intuitive guidance. All the decisions I made were intuitively led. Well, I can't say that because I would enter into certain relationships where I intuitively knew it wasn't going to work out, wasn't in my best interest, but I wanted it anyways. And you probably have had this same experience. When a relationship ended or things went a particular way, you would say to yourself, I knew it. I knew it back then. I knew it when we started. It just wasn't going to work out. I knew what they were all about, but I didn't listen. What I did with those experiences, that was training ground. That's where I could reflect and ask myself, what did that feeling feel like when it came in? How did I know? Where did it occur in my body? Was it like a voice or was it annoying? And so I started differentiating. I started delineating and making these feelings, this intuitive guidance distinct in my experience to where if it came up again, I knew what it was. You see, you can't change the past, but you can use it as a lesson, as an experience to reflect upon. It was also when I was 28, when I first started walking on burning hot coals. And, you know, once you see a few people walk across burning hot coals, you realize that it's not impossible that human people can do it, but some people burn and some people don't. And depending on the state that you're in, are you ready to walk? And so the biggest question, the biggest training ground that the fire walk presents to you, and that's walking across a a bed of 1200 degree coals, a distance of sometimes about 8 to 15 feet. Where the intuition comes in is how do you determine when you're ready to take the first step or whether you should take the first step? Because in that moment of decision, you have to check inside. You have to check and see if you're in alignment with all parts agreeing, is it time to take the first step? It wasn't until 23 years later when I actually became certified as a firewalk instructor because I knew that there was something amazing in the experience. And since then, I've walked about 600 times. And when I've taught people to walk across burning hot coals, I have them tune into their body where they kind of rise up on their toes just a little bit and then settle down where your heels are barely touching the ground. Most of your weight is on the balls of your feet. Bend the knees ever so slightly And think of your center just below your belly button and focus there. And then if it's a yes, you'll feel a little pull in your body forwards. This is kinesiology. A little pull in your body forward for a yes and a little pull back for a no. That's how I know when it's time for me to walk. If I get the little pull, then I lean into it and I take the first step and off I'm going. And so I've used the fire walk to really hone in and 
fine tune that intuitive guidance. And I tell people in my workshops, when you can listen to your intuition, when it's a whisper, then your life unfolds like magic. I say that because looking back on the relationships that I was in, that I probably should have left earlier than I did, or possibly not even gotten involved in, based on my intuitive guidance, my conscious mind overrode it. My ego wanted the love, wanted the validation that I was getting, even though it didn't really serve me ultimately. And, and that's, that's, a fine, that's a fine line there because I learned from every one of those experiences. So I can't necessarily say I was in the wrong place. It's just that I didn't listen to my intuition. And so how this goes, drawing a line back to the fire walk, when you can listen to your intuition, when it's a whisper, your life unfolds like magic. Most people don't listen to the whisper. They have to wait until they get the, the direct message, the screaming, get out of there before they actually leave. So how the process typically goes, you'll get a whisper, you'll get an urging early on. Don't do that. Stay away from there. Move forward, move back. And then you make the decision that you make. If it's in alignment with your intuition, no problem. Things start to unfold. Then you find the next breadcrumb and the next breadcrumb. But if you override it and get yourself in a situation that your intuitive guidance has been trying to guide you away from, then you'll have another decision point somewhere along the line. Your intuitive guidance, you'll have a knowing with a little bit more emphasis to follow the advice. And if you override it again, the lessons keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger until the relationship or the event escalates to a point where you basically have no choice but to leave, to pull away, to follow that inner guidance. But that process is a struggle. That's more of an effort. That's more of like taking the detour. And it's not necessarily the scenic route. It's a different route. It's down the alleys. It's down the byways. It's, it's not necessarily where you want to go, but all roads lead to Rome. All roads lead back home. You ultimately can never be off your path. You can either be moving slowly or moving faster. That's about the size of it. Your guides, your runners, your your helpers will always assist you in getting back on the road. Now, this is something I have to talk about back when I was talking about intuition. Not only do you have access to local information, subconscious mind, past pro past thinking, past experiences, that is an aspect of your intuition. But you also have access to other beings, guides, other states of consciousness that are there to support you. Intuition is primarily concerned with you, the decisions about yourself, the decisions that impact your life, because ultimately you're not responsible for other people's experiences. You're given dominion over your own choices, dominion over your own guidance. Now, your guides and your runners are part of that mix. They're shining a light on the possibility, shining a light on the direction that you could take. They are guiding you. They're not instructing you. If you want instruction, if you want deeper guidance, you can ask for it. Ask for it. Give me a sign and you'll get a sign. You'll get information out of a book. You'll hear it in a song. You'll hear it in a conversation that you might overhear. Someone might say something kind of off the cuff that is exactly what you need to hear. But as I say that, I think maybe I should spend a whole nother episode on guides, angels, runners, and helpers. Or maybe not. I'm kind of getting mixed signals here. So how it occurs, especially when you're getting the guidance, a lot of people say, show me a sign, show me a sign. And if you find yourself asking a lot, I need a sign. And then you get a sign and say, oh, maybe I need a bigger sign. Need I, can, you, can you present me with something with more emphasis, a, a big, make it a bigger deal so I can't necessarily mistaken it? And that happens. Sometimes it's too subtle. Sometimes you're not getting, you know, the, the message. So you ask for a bigger explanation. You ask for something that's undeniable, unmistakable. But, you know, you don't necessarily want to go to that extreme. Ideally, you want to learn to listen when you get the first signal, the first sign. And we'll do a whole episode on signs because, you know, people talk about angel numbers and synchronicities and all this stuff. And we'll go into that in a deeper episode. 
So for now, let's talk about how intuitive guidance will come in, when it, when it typically comes in, and then how you can begin to trust it. So your intuitive guidance, your sensations, your urgings tend to come in when your rational brain, your egoic mind is in neutral, resting. And that occurs when you're driving because you go into trance when you drive, in the shower, when you're cooking or cleaning, when your mind is on something else and you're actually operating on the other than conscious level, your conscious brain's kind of shifted into neutral and you're in a receiving state. This receiving state also occurs when you meditate. This is why meditation is so important in developing your psychic and intuitive guidance. And when that information comes in that moment, it will feel like a hit. I got a hit or I got a download you'll actually have the experience as if you're receiving something. These downloads is how you receive information for your manifestations because intuitive guidance, psychic information is always in the process of answering your current question. And so when we hold an intention, uh, something we want to manifest, that's where we're focusing our mind. That's our current question. And when we meditate, being open to receive information, and we just want to be open. If we focus on receiving information about that particular manifestation, chances are we're pushing it away because we're creating, we're creating the experience of us not having information. So we just want to get into neutral. We want to balance. We want to center. We want to ground. And I'll go into more of those definitions in another episode. Or I'll talk about one now. Essentially, centering is being able to get into neutral and be open for intuitive guidance. But many of those centering activities is are taking a shower, going for a walk, doing something that kind of takes your mind and puts it into neutral and opens you up. Now, how do you know it's intuition? How do you know it's intuitive guidance? Well, I can't speak for everybody across the board, but typically how it shows up it will feel inspiring. There'll be a sense of lightness about it. It will be illuminating like, yes, that makes sense. Sometimes there's a sense of illumination about it. When I go to a restaurant, to, to uh, I actually pick the seat that I want to be in based on its luminosity. I'll look around and if they're leading me somewhere that feels dark, looks dark to me, I'll look around to see if there's another more attractive table and I'll ask to be sat over there. But all that really provides me is a more enjoyable dining experience and possibly a waiter or a waitress that is a lot of fun to be around. Another way to tune into that intuitive guidance, what does it mean? If it's a yes, chances are it feels more expansive. It opens up, you can actually feel your heart open up, like a, a lights up, and you feel lighter. When it's a no, there feels constraint, like tightening up, like you're wrapping your arms up around your body. There's a constriction, expansion, constriction. And sometimes it feels heavy. It feels heavier when it's a no, heavier or dr more dreary. Yet this sometimes, sometimes this information flies in the face of rational thought. Like there shouldn't be any reason why you don't like that person. There shouldn't be any reason why you shouldn't go in this place. There's no reason not to sit at that table. I don't want to. I like that table. So sometimes you need to be adamant in your choice and just not give a reason. See, we're, we're taught really young. What reason do you have for that? What's your rationale? Why did you do that? I don't know. I remember being asked it as a kid. Why did you draw on that wall? I don't know. And that didn't seem like it was a good enough reason. It was a blank space. It was where I could draw. I had lots of room. I felt like it. That didn't go over too well. So that whole idea of knowing something without knowing how I knew it was kind of hard to wrap my head around. But I began to lean into it. If it felt like certainty, if it felt like a yes, then I went with it. And that brings up another way to check in with your intuitive guidance. When you think of the word yes, how does it feel? Where do you feel it in your body? Yes. I know for me, I feel it um, right in the solar plexus. 
And if you're having trouble tuning in, you can contrast that with no, no, yes, yes. T- to me, the, the no is higher in the chest. And the, the yes is about four inches above my belly button. But tuning into that inner signal of yes and no, right and wrong, actually gives you a sense or creates the distinction for you to tune into that information and uh, actually be able to trust it. In fact, in my course, I've actually set up a number of slides that flash different words, different expressions, uh, different scenes and different. So you can tune in and actually tap into the inner sensations that are going on. Is it expansive? Is it contractive? Is it a yes? Is it a no? Is it right or left? That is the basic vocabulary that you want to tune into. And then you can expand from there. But I really haven't told you how to trust it, really trust it. And this is the scary part. This is the scary part. Because, you know, what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? This is, this is what you do. Pick something that doesn't have much consequence. If it has high consequence, really debate about it. You know, check it out. And ultimately, you're going to go with your gut. Ultimately, you're going to go with your inner decision. But you can play both sides of it. Looks at, look at the advantages, the disadvantages. But in the beginning, pick circumstances that don't have any weight to it. No real risk. And what might that be? It could be picking a restaurant. It could be picking something to eat. It could be picking uh, a movie to watch. And you look at all the available options and which one feels more illuminating, which one feels lighter, which feel one feels more expansive. And then contrast that with which ones seem more dingy, which ones seem less appealing, less desirable. And then you act on it. And then... Once you act on it and go through the experience, you reflect back on it. How did it work? Was it a good choice? How did it feel when it came into my body? How did I perceive it? And this is how you build those inner distinctions. This is how you build that inner vocabulary. And once you get into psychic information, then we get into the realm of symbols and actually creating an inner vocabulary so you can actually take in information and translate it to what it might mean. And then you can, and if you're reading for somebody else, then you ask, this is the impression I'm getting, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. And usually they'll validate it or say that's not quite right. And then whatever you say might mean something for them. For instance, if I keep seeing a rooster, I'm thinking, get up early. And I say, well, this is what I'm getting. I'm getting a rooster crowing. And then that'll, they'll make a connection to grandma's farm or something like that. And then I give up my interpretation because it meant something to them. Today, I'm a multimedia psychic. When I say multimedia, I get visual pictures, I get movies, I get auditory words, I get different tones of voice, I, I get different sensations. I get information on all the different channels. But I've practiced, I've opened up these channels, and that's part of the training. And speaking of the training, if you, this is interesting to you, if you really want to dive deeper, I suggest you get involved in my Wisdom Vault. You'll get immediate access to the Intuition course, as well as some other courses, and the Psychic training will come soon, but you should really get started on the Intuition course and really get good at that first. But then, as soon as I get completely on the new platform, I'll be doing live trainings, I'll be doing Q&As, you'll actually be able to ask me questions, how to dive deeper into Intuition, and hypnosis and all these other aspects that I'm involved in. And this is where I need to say thank you to those founding members that got started with me early on because they've actually uh, put up with a lot of inconsistency on my part. And that's about to change, completely revamping the membership. And there's still founding member memberships available, meaning that once you sign on as a founding member, your rate will never go up. No matter how much more content, no matter how how high their, their rates go, your price, your investment will be locked in forever. Forever. Let's be realistic, at least till the end of the century. So if you want to get happily involved in the membership and rub shoulders with me on a weekly and monthly basis, then I suggest you go to yesdaniel.com and join the Wisdom Vault. So before I go, I need to tell you, how does tapping into intuitive guidance benefit your life? Well, it benefits your life in every way. You feel more confident about your decisions. You feel like life is unfolding for you. You 
rendezvous with synchronicities on a regular basis. In fact, you stop saying the strangest thing happened. This person came and I was thinking this and they showed up in my life. No, you just start taking it as that's the way it is. That's normal. In fact, today, if synchronicities aren't occurring for me on a regular basis, then I know my vibrations off. I know that I'm not listening to my intuitive guidance. I'm not tapping in. And yes, that does happen from time to time, but frequently, more frequently than not, let me say that, more frequently than not, synchronicity is part of my everyday life. It's the way it goes. And what else is a benefit of tapping into your intuition? Well, your relationships take on a whole new level. You go a lot deeper. You can actually pick up on the vibes of other people. You know when to ask a deeper question, when to not ask a question Your relationships take on a much more intimate, connected level. And then on the flip side, if the relationship just isn't working out, if they're not for you, you don't have to ask, you know when to leave. Sometimes it's hard to actually go through and follow that intuitive guidance. That's where it takes courage. And it's not always just a relationship. It can be a circumstance, a job, a situation. You got to move. Like You just know in your heart that you need to go. And it does take courage to follow through on that intuitive guidance. That's the downside. I think I mentioned that there's a downside to intuitive guidance. That is that sometimes it takes courage to move off in a new direction. But just understand if you're getting the intuitive guidance to leave or to change and you don't, it just means that you'll suffer longer. And even though you think you might be sparing another person's feelings without, you know, not actually coming out, you're actually making it tougher for them. Now, I need to put a disclaimer in here. I'm not telling you to leave your relationships. That's really up to you. you got to read your own vibes, read your own signals, and really, you know, ascertain what's the real driver here. What's, you know, and there's typically no emotion involved. When it's really your intuitive guidance, it's just a knowing. And then you follow through on that knowing. You're not running away from something. You're not running toward something. It's just in this moment, in this knowing, this isn't right. That's, I don't know any other way to put it than that. And, you know, I realize that some relationships may end that may, I mean, it's, it's your journey. It's your journey. I'm washing my hands of it. I'm not responsible. I'm not telling you to do anything. In fact, I want you to question everything I say. You be the discernment. You have to check in with your own vibes, check in with your own inner signals. Make the choice for yourself. I don't want to hear, well, you told me this or you said this in a podcast and so I did it. I would have never done it if you hadn't said it. No, you're responsible for your own path. And with that said, we are going to be talking more about this even in more depth. I love talking about intuition. I love talking about psychic information, how to tap in, how to have a a more expanded awareness of the world around you, the reality, the multiple layers of reality. And we're only scratching the surface. So until next time, this is your friend and host, Daniel Danovi, urging you to follow your bliss. Live your life from inner signals. Be inner-directed as you engage in the epic adventure. <laughs>